Now listen, I've been out here all this time, and I haven't been complaining about anything yet, so I think it's time to go into the complaint department. This is just a series of things that are pissing me off, okay? The Japanese government still won't allow many residents near the Fukushima plant back into areas of high radiation. Yet the Environment Ministry has started trial decontaminations in these no-go zones. Officials have designated parts of seven municipalities near the plant as unsuitable for living due to radiation over 50 millisieverts per year. The government has delayed major cleanup operations in these areas in fear of exposing people to radiation. However, ministry personnel have begun trials in five areas to find out how much can be removed. That work will continue until the end of the year. The ministry wants to determine cleanup costs. It will also study ways to control any radiation workers are exposed to. After these steps, officials say they can decide on how to decontaminate the zones. Japan's nuclear regulator is coming under fire from a group of leading experts. They say the body charged with overseeing the aftermath of the accident in Fukushima is too bureaucratic. The Nuclear Regulation Authority fielded comments on Monday from six experts who are studying the crisis in Fukushima. They looked at the NRA's first year of operation. One of the experts is a lawyer who served on a diet panel that investigated the accident. The regulators are acting like bureaucrats. When something goes wrong, they summon TEPCO officials and demand explanations. People must doubt that the regulators are really getting the truth. Another expert said drafting rules and standards isn't enough to win public trust. He urged regulators to take a more proactive stance in dealing with the crisis. Others suppressed for reforms at the NRA Secretariat. It's staffed mostly by personnel from the previous regulator and another body which was under a government umbrella that promoted nuclear power. Come on, everybody, let's be hypocritical bastards. NRA Chief Shinichi Tanaka said he feels the organization has been given a mandate that's beyond its abilities. But he said NRA members will try their best. Wow, now that's vital information. Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant face another challenge. They say that contaminated rainwater has overflowed when they were pumping it into a temporary tank. An official from the Tokyo Electric Power Company says four tons of contaminated rainwater has seeped into the ground. A tropical storm in September created the excess. It has been contained by barriers that surround the storage tanks. TEPCO officials say the rainwater overflowed when workers were pumping it into temporary tanks. The officials say the radiation level of the water just after the storm was 160 becquerels per liter. This is five times higher than the government's safety limit for releasing water into the ocean. Workers are hurrying to analyze contamination levels in the immediate area. The Nuclear Regulation Authority has expressed concern about the way TEPCO has handled the contaminated rainwater. That don't make no sense! I just made it up. Am I right? I just made it up. The, the problem right now is that Japanese researchers are afraid to tell the truth. We've got doctors calling us at Fairwind saying, um, you know, we know our patients have radiation illness and the hospital isn't allowing us to tell the patients that. We've got researchers talking about defective uh, defects in animals and uh, they're not allowed to publish their data. 
So the last piece of this is transparency. And frankly, if you leave it to the Japanese government, we're never going to get transparency. We've got to get the people involved with an oversight panel made up of civilians who have, um, who have nothing to gain or nothing to lose from telling the truth. Just really quickly, Arnie, just final question. Why do you think there hasn't been more worldwide reaction to the disaster in Japan? I mean, in terms of nuclear power, uh, we've seen Germany has decided to phase out nuclear power by 2022, but we really haven't heard about this elsewhere. You know, we're, we're addicted. Um, America's got 100 nukes and 20% of our power. The French have uh, 60 nukes and 80% of their power comes from it. So, you know, it's like you need another fix tomorrow. And, and the addiction is ours and the pain is occurring in Japan. We have to realize that the, the pain of the Japanese is our pain as well and, uh, and join with them to solve this problem. Contamination is also affecting exports. Japan's fisheries head wants South Korea to lift a ban on marine products from Fukushima and other prefectures. The South imposts the ban in response to leaks at the nuclear plant. The chief of the National Federation of Fisheries Cooperative Associations, Hiroshi Kishi, delivered a written request to the South Korean ambassador to uh, Japan's uh, Ibyong-gi uh, in Tokyo. It uh, noted that Japanese uh, marine products must meet radiation safety standards before they can be exported. The request says the ban is based on weak scientific evidence. Kishi said the government needs to understand the real situation. We want South Korea to lift the embargo as soon as possible. We will continue to request that they end it. Japanese officials say the South Korean ambassador said his government sees the leaks as a major accident, and this has created fear in his country. Stop being so nervous. Later on, we'll get ice cream. Researchers on both sides of the Pacific are working to track effects of the crippled reactors of Fukushima Daiichi in bluefin tuna. A team of American scientists at Stanford University reported last year they detected low levels of radioactive cesium in 33 of 50 bluefin caught off the coast of California. Team members said the damaged nuclear plant was the source of the contamination. They made their conclusion based on levels of cesium-134, which has a half-life of about two years and only produced by nuclear reactors. The Japanese and U.S. researchers are trying to start a joint study to determine how the toxins got into the tuna. NHK World's Yoichiro Tatewa explains in Japan in depth. Professor Hideo Yamazaki of Kinki University has been studying marine creatures in the waters of Fukushima Prefecture. We estimated concentration levels to be so low they wouldn't be detectable in the U.S. But the fact they found contaminated fish off the coast of the U.S. really shocked us, even if the figures are extremely low. Yamazaki says the level of contamination doesn't pose a threat to human health, but he says he wants to share his data with the U.S. researchers to figure out how the tuna pick up the radioactive material. Yamazaki says it takes time for tuna to accumulate radioactive substances since they're at the top of the marine food chain. Tiny creatures such as plankton absorb radioactive substances first. Small fish then eat the plankton. And big fish like tuna eat the smaller ones Recent studies show bluefin tuna spend their juvenile period in Japan's coastal waters. The fish then take one to four months to migrate across the Pacific to the U.S. West Coast. Yamazaki says he thinks he can figure out how and where the bluefin tuna accumulate radioactivity by studying fish on both sides of the ocean. He asked the U.S. researchers to collaborate with his team. Japan needs to work with people from different sides to gather and assess the same set of data. We need to provide the public with reliable information. Researchers at Stanford University in April sent 20 30-gram slices of tuna to Japan. But customs agents at Kansai International Airport stopped them. They said proper documentation was missing. 
Customs clearance is tough for bluefin tuna because of stock conservation requirements. They said a document that proves the samples are not from the Atlantic Ocean is needed to start import procedures. But the U.S. government does not issue such paperwork for research purposes. So the samples are still at the airport, frozen six months on. This is an urgent situation. We need customs officials to understand just how critical this is and facilitate the timely transportation of materials that need to be studied. Scientists in the U.S. and Japan are calling for international cooperation and flexibility so they can better study the effects of the nuclear accident. A Japanese government official later told NHK World a request for the release of the samples by scientists is being considered. Now, the increase in confidence is an important factor in a decision by the Prime Minister. Shinzo Abe wants to press ahead with a plan to rein in Japan's mountain of debt. He's announcing later in the day he'll raise the consumption tax to 8% from 5 starting next April. But he's pairing the move with a new stimulus package to ease the impact on his main economic priority, growth. Abe has spent months weighing the costs and benefits of the sales tax increase, which was set in motion by the previous administration. He decided to go ahead with it, but he'll inject $50 billion into the economy to offset the impact. Some of that money will go directly to low-income earners. They'll receive about $100 to $150 in cash each. The government will also commit a large chunk of the stimulus toward repairs on old tunnels and bridges. And it will invest in better transportation infrastructure for the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Lawmakers with the ruling Liberal Democratic Party and coalition partner New Komeito have agreed to consider another idea. They want to scrap a corporate tax designed to raise money for the reconstruction effort in the Northeast. The levy was scheduled to expire at the end of March 2015, but Prime Minister Abe wants to end it a year early. LDP lawmakers say they'll look for other sources of revenue to support the reconstruction. They're also proposing a two-year extension of a tax break for companies that increase their employees' salaries. And they plan to start discussions on setting new corporate tax rates. The plan will actually see the sales tax doubled. The first step is from 5 to 8%, which will come into effect in April. The second step will see an increase to 10% in two years. Even some who support the increase worry the government won't properly manage the pay rise it's about to give itself. The question is how they are going to increase the revenue from tax. They are talking about lowering the corporate tax again, but the government has always been too lenient towards businesses. I hope they can collect tax but still support the weak in society and pay for education and medical costs. Therein lies the challenge for a government which has to try to balance the books. Wayne Hay, Al Jazeera, Tokyo. President Rouhani's tone isn't swaying leaders in Israel. They remain convinced the Iranians are using their nuclear program to build a bomb. President Obama is trying to reassure them that the U.S. will maintain its tough stance on the issue. Obama met at the White House with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I believe that it's the combination of a credible military threat and the pressure of those sanctions that have brought Iran to the negotiating table. Our hope is that we can resolve this diplomatically, but uh, as President of the United States, I've said before, and I will repeat, that uh, we take no options off the table, including military options. Obama added that Rouhani must back up his words with actions to prove to the U.S. and other nations that Iran is not trying to make a nuclear weapon. You are merely a few minutes older, but infinitely more knowledgeable than before.